In general, there are two major classifications for stroke. There's our hemorrhagic strokes, which are bleeding in the brain, and ischemic strokes, which are either, ca either caused by a blood clot in the brain or a blood clot that traveled to the brain. In the second case, we call that an embolic stroke. And if there's a blood clot in the brain, it's a thrombotic stroke. Now, these strokes can be very, very different in how they present. When people have hemorrhage, it can be a neurologic or neurosurgical emergency because the amount of bleeding and the amount of swelling can produce extensive damage in the brain and profound neurologic compromise. With embolic and thrombotic strokes, the presentation is not nearly as dire. It is a myth that all strokes are caused by high blood pressure, diabetes, and tobacco use. In fact, there are a lot of other issues that can cause stroke in both young adults and older adults. Estrogen can increase risk of stroke, just like tobacco can increase risk of stroke. In a very simple way, you can have a stroke because of problems with the blood vessels, them becoming too hard or becoming too weak and then rupturing, or because of problems with the blood, such as a hypercoagulable state or a change in the blood proteins that can predispose you to having a clot. Hemorrhagic strokes are independent of things like uh, high cholesterol or arteriosclerosis. Uh, and uh, in most cases, young people don't have years of exposure to tobacco or diabetes that will increase their risk of a thrombotic stroke. Hemorrhage, however, can be caused by high, having high blood pressure um, and also be caused by an abnormality of the blood vessel in the brain. Now, young people can develop these things even as children, and they won't manifest uh, until later in life. And it's been my experience that a lot of those cases happen in young adults or early middle age, as opposed to the elderly who typically have the strokes that we think about every day. There's some evolving literature regarding stroke incidents in COVID. The reality is, is there are many things about this virus and the body's immune response to the virus that we are still understanding. Now, this is the type of stroke that could affect anybody, young, old, healthy, or ill, because it has everything to do with how the immune system is responding to the virus, as opposed to the virus itself affecting the brain. Uh, there's a lot to be learned about this, but uh, I think it's very possible that we're going to see stroke syndromes uh, that might mimic anoxic brain injury cases as a result of COVID infection. It is a myth that once you're done with your acute rehab stay that that's all the rehab you're going to. The truth is, is that strokes evolve and that also brains evolve. Uh, recovery for uh, different people it follows different trajectory. And there's definitely no shame in going back to rehab. In fact, I think it's invaluable because things are going to change and uh, you'll need changes to your exercise program and maybe changes to the therapeutic approach. And there could be medication changes that become more salient as you recover. I know we've talked about a lot of scary things and if you've had a stroke and you're exploring where you want to continue your journey to recovery, I just want to reassure you that the Center for Neuroskills is an extraordinary place. I also work in a hospital setting every day, and the toolbox that we have at CNS dwarfs by orders of magnitude the things we get to do in a hospital setting. One of the nice things about the program, in addition to the fact that there's so many tools that we have to work with, is that there is an ongoing review of your progress uh, geared towards a long recovery. Uh, it's not just two weeks and then you're out the door. Uh, we really are looking at how you're going to recover over the next year which in my experience makes a huge difference.